Hello and welcome to JavaScript Beginner Projects. So the goal of this project is to build a JavaScript background color changer. So it is a very simple project. However, there is a lot to learn in this project if you're new to JavaScript. So we're going to cover the document.query selector. We're going to be using math floor, math random to string. And then we're going to be able to apply a new style to the page. In addition to that, we're going to create a custom function and also incorporate Bootstrap. So this is what we're going to be building in this project, a simple web page where we click me and it changes the color of the background. So we'll be integrating Bootstrap into this project. So head over to Bootstrap if you've not used it before and click on documentation, introduction, and then just copy the starter template. So I've copied and pasted the bootstrap template file from the website onto this new page I've called background color switcher.html. So first thing I need to do, if you're not familiar with this, I'm just gonna get rid of these last lines here. And we don't need that. We won't need this middle section here. So we just got body body HTML. And then we're gonna need the bootstrap CSS file. So we keep that. And everything now is ready to start the project. Okay, so we start off with a new div element here. And we've added the attribute class container. So container is a, a bootstrap class. So this is going to create a nice container that is centralized. And it's around about 1,170 1, pixels wide. And then we add the style height 100VH, which is view height. So basically this container is always going to be the same height as your browser. Okay, so next up we have a new element here with the class row and then h100. So h100 is the bootstrap class for defining the height as a percentage. So this element here is going to be 100% high. So notice that we first of all set the container here to be 100% in height. And so this is also going to be 100% in height. And then we justify content center. So another bootstrap class to center any of the child elements. So any elements in here are going to be centered. So next up, we add a new element. Uh, so class col4. So the col4 identifies the width of this container. And then we have my auto. So my auto is margin on the y axis. Uh, so the y axis and auto. So it means that this button is going to be central in the y axis axis. Remember, we've set the container here to be 100% height. So we're now going to set the, the button to be in the middle. And then we have text center. So this button is going to move into the center of this container. So if we now display that in our web page, we now have this button that's on the y axis in the center, and then is obviously center on the page. Finally, we've added this button here. Um, and we've added the class again, this is all bootstrap classes here. So BNT to define as a button, and then the color of the button primary. So if you want to have a look at any of those bootstrap um, elements, if I just type in BNT primary, that's going to take you to the page where it's going to show you. No, it's not. <laughs> okay. Just type in button. And then here you can see all the different colors that are already built into bootstrap. So that's all the HTML sorted and the styling for this project. Okay. So first of all, we need to build this constant variable called button. And then we want to be able to interact with the button when it's pressed. So we need to know um, it, it is a button and where it is. So we create document.query selector. And then we include um, the name of this element called button in the element selector here. So we specify the selector. So that's the first thing we need to do. So now we've created a, a pointer, if you like, to the button. Now we're going to create an an event listener because the event we want to listen for is to someone pressing the button. So here we refer to the button constant and then that identifies where we want the, the add event listener to be applied to. So button dot and then add event listener. And then we need to define what event to listen for. In this case, it's click. So when someone clicks on this button, we're listening for this event, this click. And then we define what we want to do when someone clicks on this button. So we use the comma 
And then now we're going to create a new function called change BG, change background. So now we've created a new function called change background. So here we can contain new information, new instructions uh, for our button. So we press the button, uh, we identify the button, and then we add a listener to it. So click listener. So when someone clicks on the button, we now get taken to this new function called change background or change BG. So now we're inside of here. Now we're going to add some script in here to actually change the background color. So in order to change the color of the background, we're going to need to define a color. And that can be done in many ways in HTML. If you're not familiar with it, we can define colors in, in this hex format and an RGB format, for example. So in our example, we're going to be using hex colors to define the color of a background. And you can see here, for example, hex and then triple zero, triple zero equals black and then so on. So we're going to need to be able to produce this type of number format. So let's start off by creating a new variable. And now we need to use some maths. So the first function we're going to use is maths floor. So this returns the largest integer less than or equal to a given number. So you can see here that if we had 5.95, the expected outcome would be 5. 5.055 5, and so on. So we're going to need to use this first. So this is what it looks like so far. So here we're going to generate our hex number in case I didn't say that. So the next function we're going to need is the math random. So we're going to be able to need to generate a number to generate the numbers for the color. So therefore this math random will allow us to generate a number in the range of zero to one. So obviously zero to one isn't going to be very useful for us. So we're going to need to multiply that by a number to generate a high enough number so that we can utilize it to generate a web color or hex color. So let's take a look at an example of maths random. We run it and you can see it generates a number. Now, if we apply that with maths floor, this number here is always going to be zero. This is what maths floor is going to do. There we go. So now we need to generate a bigger number with maths random. So now we're going to times the maths random number by this number here. And there we go. So now we're generating some interesting numbers. So obviously at the moment, this isn't in um, the correct format. Because if you remember, a hex color requires six numbers. And at the moment, this is generating, well, seven numbers or more. So in order for us to represent our number as a hexadecimal color or hex number, hex color, um, we're going to need to convert this number into hexadecimal format, this 16-bit format. And we can do that by utilizing the two string. So like I said here, the two string method returns the value of the string object, but it converts the numeric value of each element to its equivalent hexadecimal string representation. And that's what's going to generate our hex color. So let's just see this in action. So here we have the code in place. We've got a number, press run. And you can now see it's generating our, our hex color values, utilizing numbers and letters. Okay, so that's our hex color sorted. Now we need to apply it to our page. Let's first create a new variable. Um, to capture the body element. So we use a document.query select a body. And now we can apply something to the body. In this case, we now want to apply a new style. Okay, so to finish this project, we add body.style to uh, identify we want to change the style of the body. And then what do we want to apply? We want to apply a new style to the background color. And then we want that to equal. Uh, the hashtag, because if you remember, if we're using hex colors, we need to start off with the hashtag. And then we plus the concatenation. So you want to add, create a string that includes the hash. And then not the plus, but whatever is included in this um, variable here. So in this variable, this is what builds the actual number system, the hex number system that we generated earlier. So what's going to be applied now in the background color of the body is background color equals and then the color that begins with a hex 
and then the new 16-bit number that we generated here that's stored in this variable. So to conclude this, we go over to our page, just refresh, press click me, and you can now see you have a background color changer.